Great. Have fun, Darren. Thanks so much. Can everybody hear me okay? Okay, good. It's coming through. Hi, everyone. My name is Darren Dunlap. I'm in the uh, Collaboration Technology Group, and I look after our Jabber SDK, and I also look after our Jabber Guest offering, which has SDKs. I did a session on that yesterday. If you missed it and are interested, you can check out the, the content later. Um, today, I'm going to talk to you about you know, building web applications, essentially, that have Jabber capabilities. So voice, video, voicemail, conferencing, these sorts of capabilities in the context of your own custom application or uh, an existing web application that you might have in a line of business, for example, uh, and be able to you know, voice enable that, video enable it, presence enable it, those sorts of things. So quickly, uh, show of hands, anybody use the Jabber SDK today? We've got a couple people, okay, so this is new information for most folks, uh, that's good. This is, this is a short session, 30 minutes, so I'm going to go kind of quickly, but certainly if you have questions, raise them up here as I go, and then if you want to have any discussion afterwards, I'll, I'll hang around and, and get all your questions answered. So let's get started. It's going to be a quick intro. I'll talk about how the SDK is architected, the components that make it up, talk about some use cases, also get into uh, what's new. So there have been some good developments this last year, and we have some good things coming up shortly. So, of course, anything forward-looking, this safe harbor statement, just make sure you remember, subject to change, um, anything that's forward-looking. So let me first talk about where the Jabber SDK fits in our Jabber portfolio. So we have, on the right here, you have our call control, SIP, presence IM, meetings, voice messaging, those services that you're probably familiar with with Jabber. By the way, how many folks have Jabber deployed in their enterprises or businesses? Okay, great, most everybody here. So those same underlying services uh, the Jabber SDK uses. So that's really the right side of this slide. The stuff on the left would be your guest users, and that's really what, those are people, random people outside of your business. Could be your customers, partners. They are more um, readily addressed with our Jabber guest offering. So this talk is all about the stuff on the right, and web enabling with that. So this is really about expanding to web applications, the same sort of functions you're familiar with with the Jabber uh, clients, Jabber Windows, Jabber Mac, what have you, and being able to put those, those capabilities right into your own web app. So that could be your, your own app built from scratch, but what a lot of people tend to be looking for is, I have an existing app, it's an asynchronous site sort of uh, tool in terms of interacting with other folks, and I want to make it real time. I want to add real time capabilities to that web application. So you can, a lot of that is also around streamlining business processes, right? So if you can, if you can take some of that weighting of, out of the asynchronous nature of a lot of applications and make it real time and get to answers, decisions much more quickly, uh, that really can drive profit, productivity, all kinds of good things, right? Um, yeah, so what it, what it is, and there's just some example screenshots shown here, which I'll go into more later in the presentation, uh, but it's really about uh, the capabilities of voice and HD video, you know, high quality, the same sort of experience and quality you'd expect and get from the Jabber clients, but in your web application. Uh, also, I am in presence, um, and voicemail and meetings, launching into WebEx meetings, managing WebEx meetings, those sorts of things. Now, these are also, you don't have to do all of these. These are very, it's very modular, so you can, you can pick and choose. If you just need a voice enablement of a web app, you can do that. If you just want to put some presence uh, and have some chat capability, you can just do that, or you can combine them. So, what are the, how is this built? So, fundamentally, it's really the UC infrastructure, you're familiar with the Jabber deployments already, UC manager, for call control and voice and video. Uh, UC, uh, UC Manager IM and Presence for, uh, for presence and instant messaging or the, the cloud service, the WebEx Messenger service can be used. If you prefer that, then for voicemail, that's our Unity connection and of course the WebEx meetings. Now what we provide on top of that um, are a few things. So one, for the voice and video, you use what we call our web phone or or uh, essentially an Ajax library, a, a JavaScript library that you use in conjunction with a browser add-on to voice and video enable your application. So that's one set of integration you can do using that JavaScript library. 
then on top of that, there's also, or in addition to that, there's a, um, a JavaScript library called Caxel, and that's what you use to enable the IMM presence. And then for, for both for the voicemail and meetings, those are actually just server or service-based APIs that you just call. So we don't provide libraries that you integrate, you just actually make calls directly in your application to those RESTful interfaces. Or the, in the WebEx case, it's more of a URL or uh, XML sort of interface. So it's on top of these, these interfaces and, and libraries essentially that we provide that you would do your development and your integration. So it's basically HTML, uh, JavaScript, CSS development that you would do on top of what we provide with our SDK uh, to, to integrate these capabilities into your own web application. And we provide some custom or, or, um, sample code and sample apps so you can get started quickly and just see basic functionality. And then if you want to you know, pretty things up and make them more compelling, you can certainly go beyond that. And of course, we're supporting the big you know, uh, four browsers. So in terms of expertise that you need to get started with the Jabber SDK, um, you know, at that base layer, it's the same folks you have today that are you know, making your Jabber clients work well, right? That the, the UC engineers that, that, that keep your communication manager, your community connection, all those things humming along, right? Uh, so those are, those are, it sounds like, in place for most of your companies. Um, so in addition to that, you really just need web developers. So this is just basic web developer sort of skill set that's needed. It's, it helps to have some knowledge of you know, how our systems are architected, but they don't have to be you know, UC engineers or uh, experts in SIP or any of those sort of um, you know, more advanced protocols or those sort of things. Really standard web developers should be able to integrate. Can we get a mic for questions? Do we have that? Okay, I'll repeat it. Here. So the, the question was, does this include anything with Spark, or basically, right? Where does it, Spark is, is an application at this point. It doesn't have publicly available APIs, so it's a little earlier. That is part of the larger strategy and vision, but stay tuned for more information, maybe even later this year about that, okay? So yes, this is, just in case that wasn't per perfectly clear, Jabber SDK is really targeted at your existing on-prem um, services that you use for UC and video and so forth, as well, the WebEx Messenger cloud service for IMM presence or the meetings in the cloud, okay? Um, so that's basically a very high level architecture, how this is built. The, I'm gonna go now into each of those, those API sort of areas or SDK areas. So the voice side, I talked about we have an Ajax library. It's, it's built around jQuery. Um, it's called Quick, cwic.js. Maybe some of you folks have seen that. And basically that works in conjunction with your a browser add-on to do one of two things. You can have it operate in a soft phone mode, so you can actually have media and call control all terminated in the browser. Okay, so your browser becomes uh, you know, a, a voice endpoint or a video endpoint, depending on how you want to use it. And then the other mode you can have is phone control. So you can also, that browser add-on also can do CTI control back through Communication Manager, and you can control your desk phone or other CTI controllable endpoint through Communication Manager. And you can, you know, you can give the user, as a, as a developer, you can give the user the option to use both of those. They can just switch in between, like you can with the Jabber clients, or you could just expose one or the other. It's up to you. Um, so this, and this, a key thing to note here too is this works on Windows and Mac because we do still have the browser add-on dependency. Those browser add-ons are platform specific, so you can use it on, on Windows and Mac. And unfortunately, we don't have the ability to use it on Linux or something else, which is sometimes of interest to, to customers and partners. Um, the way this works is you would just basically put this JavaScript library, um, let me see, this is, oh, there we go this library and the add-on onto your web server. So wherever your web app is being served up or you know, some web server infrastructure that you have, you would put these assets and of course your, your custom developed code for the web browser. Um, so the user, when they navigate to your page, they would be you know, given back that JavaScript automatically. They would get the uh, add-on prompt. You have to prompt them to add the add-on if they don't have it, that sort of thing. 
And once they do that, essentially you're registering just like a Jabber client would via SIP to Communications Manager. Okay, so once you get that registration done, now it's basically an ID and password to do that. You're essentially a live soft phone that, or, or desk phone control mode that can you know, place or receive calls. It's pretty simple. Um, the way, well, it, the browsers that this uh, and operating systems this works on is listed here. So Windows and Mac, uh, it's basically um, Windows 7 or later, and I think it's off the top of my head, Mac 10, 7 or so or later. Um, and then, you know, IE, Firefox, Chrome, um, Safari, of course, on the Mac. Now, this uses also the same underlying voice engine, voice and video media engine that the other Jabber clients do, our Precision Video Engine. So you get the same uh, voice and video sort of uh, capabilities and codecs. So you get, you know, G711, 29, 22.1, which is a wideband audio codec, and then H.264, of course, for video. Now, you also, too, need licensing to use this um, especially in the soft phone mode, because that requires essentially a user identity and the ability to have, so, so you're, if you're already licensed as a user for Jabber, you could use this in addition. Okay, so our UCL, or cool licensing, is, is really what typically enables that for people. Any questions so far? That was the voice piece, I just, and video piece, I just covered that. Say again, I'm sorry. <laughs> codec, the video codec. Any no, video, plans for video, additional video. Yeah, 264 is our focus at this point. We, you know, 265 is certainly somewhere we'd like to go, but really, you know, the sort of endpoints this would run on, the laptops and such, PCs, they're really not capable of handling 265 at this point. In the future, as they get stronger, yeah, yeah, or more powerful. Go ahead. Any roadmap for um, plug-in-less or HTML5 based? Yeah, so the question is basically about WebRTC. So we'd like to get away from having to require the add-on. That's certainly not optimal. Um, at this, just quickly, since I don't have a lot of time, WebRTC is really a client technology. So there's a lot of stuff that has to happen in the infrastructure to be able to use WebRTC with our systems or any other you know, traditional uh, communication system. So we can't do anything in the, the SDK until our infrastructure supports WebRTC. So it's unfortunately nothing that's going to happen soon, but it's still a vision to get there. OK, now on the, the present side, we have Caxel, so Cisco Ajax XMPP library. This is, again, a uh, JavaScript library that you just can use either with the on-premise or cloud IAM and presence from Cisco. Um, this basically came out of our acquisition of, of Jabber and evolution of their JabberWork suite. And um, it's, it's using a, a technology called Bosch to be able to have that sort of um, real-time or near real-time you know, events around presence changing and sending chats and all that sort of stuff. So the way this works is very similar to the last one. You have your web server. You would just put this JavaScript library on your web server with your web app and your custom code to use it. And then the user just gets prompted, you know, that just automatically gets downloaded when they access your app. You log in, whether that's to the on-prem service for CUCM IMP or the cloud with WebEx Messenger. And then you're, you're getting your, uh, your, your presence information shared and seeing others' presence and able to chat. So very simple. This is a list of capabilities. I don't have time to really go into all of them, but it's pretty, there's a pretty broad set of things you can do with this. It's not every single thing you could do, like on a Jabber client. For example, persistent chat. There's some basic capabilities you can use this for persistent chat with the on-prem CUCM IMP, but you can't do all of the administrative sort of persistent chat capabilities you could do with the Jabber clients. But you can do temporary present subscriptions too, which are really nice so that you don't have to actually have somebody in your buddy list, but say you're just navigating to a web page that has a bunch of names listed on it, like a, like a enterprise social networking or other application, a, a, like a cor in, internal corporate portal. You could use the temp pre uh, present subscriptions to just see those people's present state as, they, as you go from page to page without putting them in your buddy list. But you can do one-to-one -one chats, just ad hoc group chats, those sorts of things as well. And then on the, the Unity connection side, voicemail, the RESTful interface here is really pretty powerful. 
Uh, the Jabber clients use it to, to do their visual voicemail capabilities. So you can do you know, everything from just seeing your messages, playing back your messages, to um, even creating new ones, forwarding, all those sorts of things. Uh, telephone, record, playback, record and playback, those sorts of things. Even sorting and filtering of messages. So very powerful. Um, on the use case side, so let me just go through some examples. This is a mock-up. This isn't an actual offering from Cisco, but just conceptually in an SAP project space, right? being able to add where you see people's names listed, their present state, being able to um, you know, have essentially a contact card associated with that where you could escalate into not only like an email through an email link, but into a chat session, into a voice call, video call, uh, into a WebEx meeting if you'd like. And it's showing here too, you can put that video experience right there in the browser um, and you know, have the basic call controls that are available. So that's an example of what could be done. This is a real offering from a company called Bullpros out of Europe. Uh, where they have integrated uh, the Jabber SDK very nicely into what's shown here is IBM Connections. So there's a lot of companies out there using Connections for enterprise social networking. It's one of the most popular apps out there for that. And this is a great in uh, integration that adds presence, chat, video calls as shown here. Bullpros also has some nice integrations with SAP and with uh, Microsoft SharePoint. Uh, another off offering here is from a partner called Esna. Uh, they, uh, they have done a really nice job integrating the Jabber SDK into uh, the Google applications, also others as well. Uh, but they've you know, done everything from you know, the presence in IM and voice and video like I've talked about here, but also the unified messaging capabilities. So you have that single inbox experience in a Google and Gmail essentially. Um, and that's through, through a back-end integration with Unity Connection. And we even have a partner doing an operator console that incorporates video for the Jabber SDK. And that's Mita out of, uh, out of Europe as well. So many others, and there's also some very interesting use cases, just internal IT departments. You don't have to be an ISV to use this. You, know, you can really just use it in your own IT organization if you have your own custom internal portal and that sort of thing. So what's new? Um, last summer, well, I guess it was about September time frame, we came out with a 9.3 version, and this was a pretty big release because we had to do something because Google was dropping NP API plugin support in Chrome. So anybody that's using the Jabber SDK or wants to do anything with Chrome, you gotta make sure you're at this 9.3 version or later because it, it provides a different way of integrating into Chrome that's not dependent on the NP API technology, which they just recently dropped from Chrome, um, I think a couple months ago. So I'll talk some more about how this works, but basically what it does is it, it uses a native separate window that you can either have as a separate floating native window or you can actually make it look and feel like it's part of the browser, and I'll talk about that in a second. So the way this works just fundamentally is it does require one extra step for the end user initially. They have to get an extension, a Chrome extension from the web store. Everybody familiar with Chrome web extensions? It's, it's actually a very simple thing to access and download and install. It happens very quickly. So it's not a huge issue as far as the usability goes, but it's just one extra step to keep in mind that you have to make sure that users know they need to get that extension before they have the, the add-on and get that going. So that just like you would bef today, you would get, or before the, this drop of the uh, MP API technology, you know, you would add, you would download the add-on, you would install that. It's, it's the exact same experience as far as the end user sees. And then what happens is you see here, there's a, there's a separate video window that, you know, you can move around wherever on your desktop. So it's not, it's not built into the browser, but that's just, we, we can't otherwise do that until you, unless you go down the WebRTC path with, with Google, it's just limitations of their browser. So this is, we actually worked with Google and uh, they helped us you know, confirm that this was a good approach and it's actually worked out really well. You can also, if you're using another browser and you prefer this separate native window, you can, like with IE or another browser, Firefox, use this as well. It's up to your, your choice. Um, and then, let's see. So this is the slide about, we also did an MR2 for 9.3 in the March timeframe and that allows you to just tell the SDK 
okay, I want you to always align this, your, the video window to this particular HTML element, typically a div, right? A rectangular div. So what'll happen there is it'll, the, the JavaScript and the extension work together with the add-on to automatically track and adjust the, the video window to place it and size it so it looks and feels like it's in the browser window. So it sounds a little kind of, I don't know, kludgy, but it actually works really well. So if you want to maintain that same uh, you know, in-browser video experience in Chrome, this is, this is the version you need and it's actually quite simple to do. You don't have to do all the logic to figure out you know, where it needs to go. That's all built into the JavaScript, so it's very easy from a developer perspective. Um, so what's new? So the Jabber, or what's coming next? So the, just recently we announced the, um, the early adopter program, our beta program, for the next major version of the Jabber SDK, which we're calling 11.0. So we are skipping to, to align it number-wise with the, the other Jabber clients. Uh, but this is, this is a major effort uh, by the development team, and they're, they're basically re-architecting the add-on to use the same underlying client framework as our other Jabber clients. So that's gonna get us the ability to, to readily add uh, key things like firewall traversal without a VPN. So are people familiar with mobile remote access with Jabber, where you don't need a VPN client using our expressway? Same idea here with the Jabber SDK. So you'll be able to uh, use this outside of the firewall uh, and not require a VPN and have your all the voice and video functions work. Now this is just voice and video to start. You know, we wanted to be able to do IM and presence to start too, but that's, there were dependencies we couldn't align in this time frame. So we're starting there and we'll look to add the other for IM and P later. Um, the other key thing that this release is planning to add is single sign-on support. So the same SAML-based single sign-on support you have with the Jabber clients, you'll be able to do with this for voice and video as well for the SDK. So I'm just showing a mock-up here. If you have your third party, you know, this is one way you could potentially implement you know, uh, showing that single sign-on prompt uh, you know, from your identity provider uh, right there within the window, but you could pop it up as a separate window. You, know, you really have that flexibility as a developer. Um, some key thing to note too is we have done everything we can to really try to avoid any API changes in this 11.0 release, but there are some that we couldn't avoid. Uh, and they've been documented since we came out with the MR2 release back in March. So um, you will have to make some, if you already have an app or de are developing an app, you could, you're you gonna have to make some changes for this. They're, they're not major ones though. And you can find the details on that up on the uh, DevNet site. And the other thing too is, if we encourage, I encourage all of you, you, it doesn't cost anything if you're not already part of the, the customer connection program. I actually, show of hands, who's, who's not part of the con customer connection program? Okay, a couple. Go sign up for that program, it's, it's awesome. It gives you access to um, all of the betas for the Jabber clients and the Jabber SDK. There's lots of events, um, you know, networking, community support. Uh, those sorts of things that, um, that the connection program provides, insight into roadmaps earlier than other folks, some of that sort of thing. So uh, do that and sign up for the Jabber SDK 11 EAP if you're interested in moving forward or already doing something with the SDK. So you can get um, you know, an early insight into how this is working, uh, the API changes, and actually start modifying your code if you're in that boat. So that's, that's all the, the content I had. You know, key takeaways here are make sure, um, or, or, well, first of all, if you haven't signed up for DevNo, DevNet, like was mentioned at the start of my, my talk, please do, it's free. Uh, if you, to get to this Jabber SDK, the key thing to remember is jabberdeveloper.com. So we provided a shortcut URL, jabberdeveloper.com. If you forget everything else I say during this talk, remember jabberdeveloper.com and you can get all this information and more. Um, but you know, some of the key takeaways, again, here are, this can really help uh, you know, increase productivity, uh, even profit in terms of making people um, quicker, more agile, able to uh, you know, work through their, their, their business processes, their, their workflows, and, and by incorporating these real-time capabilities instead of always, say, waiting for an email or those sorts of asynchronous sort of communication technologies. 
Um, it can really streamline your business processes, and of course you're going to get the high quality and security and reliability from this app like you would get from your other Jabber and Cisco applications and endpoints that you'd expect. The other really nice thing about this too is you can provide a very consistent user experience in context of your web applications by you know, skinning this however you'd like. So it can be a very natural feeling part of your application uh, and make it that much easier for users to adopt and use. Of course, please fill out your surveys. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this session. I know it's been kind of a, a quick one, but um, certainly stick around afterwards if you have any questions. And I think we're probably about out of time. How much? Five minutes? Okay, we do have a few more minutes. Anybody have any questions we want to try to get addressed here? Okay, thanks everybody. Appreciate your time. Thanks for coming.